I was contacted by a friend who said they wanted an edger, but not one of the big ones. Instead, they wanted a stick edger. I went through my storage and found this one sitting in the corner, but it was missing a few parts. I didn't remember why it was there, so I had to go through my old videos to find any information about it. It turns out I left this thing for dead after doing a compression test, but it turns out I may have made a mistake. In today's project, we look at this Echo Edger and the problem is that it starts, but it doesn't run like it's supposed to. Now, this was supposed to be a failed project from more than two years ago, but it turns out the equipment I was using to test it with was faulty. So we're going to take another look at it. If you want to see that video, there should be a link at the top right of the screen. Now, I'm going to try and repair this edger. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. In the previous episode on this edger, we cleaned and serviced the carb, and I also replaced the fuel tank grommet, but after getting it started, I wasn't able to get it to run like it was supposed to. I then used my old compression tester that I've had for a very long time, and it showed that the engine was low on compression and would need a full rebuild for it to work the way it was supposed to. Now, it's a shame that happened because that bad compression tester may have misdiagnosed a couple of trimmers before I realized it. Now, the testers are very fragile, so if you think yours might be giving you bad readings, there should be a link in the description if you need to buy a new one. And speaking of new testers, we're going to use my newest tester to see what it says about this engine. <laughs> So the new reading is around 74 PSI, which doesn't sound that great, but it's a lot better than the reading we got two years ago, which was around 30. Now, if you think about it, it didn't make sense because when it's that low, the engine wouldn't even start. But with the new reading, it tells me that the engine does have some wear on it, but it will start and run and there should still be some life left in it. The other thing I didn't know was that these carbs look like they can't be adjusted, but they can be. You just need to get to the screws, which have been covered up. Now, the L screw is for adjusting fuel delivery at idle speeds, and when squeezing the trigger, to get to this tiny flathead screw, you need to remove the cap that can be either metal or plastic. So here's the cap that was hiding the head of the screw on top of the carb in the middle of the barrel. With it gone, we can now use a precision flathead to turn it, but it has to be a very specific size, otherwise you won't be able to turn it, or if it's too small, you could damage it. The first one I chose fits the opening, but it's too large to fit the slot. That means I'll have to use one slightly smaller. Now I can feel this one grabbing the screw, so this is the one we're going to be using. Here are the two of them side by side, so you can see what the size difference is between one that does and one that doesn't fit. The next thing we need to do is to remove the cap on the side of the carb that hides the H screw, and this one is for full speed fuel adjustment. I'm going to use the same technique before, but this one isn't going to go as well as the other one. Unfortunately, the drill bit was not able to grab a hold of the cap, but I inadvertently drilled the cap completely gone instead, which also works as well. The next thing we need to do is to get this trimmer ready for a test run. There are a few issues we need to address before we try and start it, though. The muffler is missing the plate that holds the spark arrestor screen, so it actually has a pretty cool sound to it, but I may have to take the plate from a different parts engine if my friend doesn't like the sound from it. The air filter and its cover are both gone, so I have to wonder if I may have used them on a different trimmer in the two years this one was sitting in storage. The parts I'm using are from a different trimmer, so hopefully they'll find a new home on this one. The last thing we need to do is to put some fuel into the tank and then try starting it. Now, when pressing an empty bulb, fuel should partially fill it, otherwise the engine is very unlikely to start. If you don't see any fuel in the bulb, then there might be an issue with the carb or the bulb itself. Since we have fuel in this bulb, we can try and start it. So it's doing exactly the same thing it was doing the last time, so I'm going to try and start it again and see if we can try and get it to perform any differently. <laughs> 
Since it won't stay running, more than likely the engine needs more fuel from the carb, and to start, we're going to adjust the L screw in the barrel on top of the carb. To get more fuel from the carb, we need to turn the screw counterclockwise, and to start, I'm going to turn it a quarter turn. Now, this screw is very difficult to turn, so you might need to use a lot of force. After that, we'll start it again and see if it stays running. So after turning the screw a quarter turn counterclockwise, the engine ran for a lot longer. However, when trying to squeeze the trigger, it finally died. It's fair to assume that if we turn it another quarter turn counterclockwise so the carb can deliver even more fuel to the engine, that might keep the engine from dying this time. So after turning the L screw out a total of half a turn and the H screw roughly about half a turn, it seems to be running okay now. It's really hard to tune it at full throttle with the plate gone from the muffler because the sound from the muffler is quite overpowering. The next thing I need to do is to let the engine cool down so we can see if the new settings will affect the way the engine will start when cold. So it's been about two hours since we last started it, and as you can see, the engine is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the ambient air temperature at the moment. Hopefully it starts and runs with the new settings. If not, we'll have to adjust them once again. So it seems to run okay, but the lower than normal compression isn't helping out much when going to full throttle, but it should still be fine as long as the blade is sharp. Overall, it's about the best we can hope for when dealing with an engine that's got a few miles on it. Now is it working like brand new? Absolutely not, but it's probably better than the new overpriced equipment you find at the big box stores. Another reason why this edger wouldn't run correctly would be a clogged spark arrestor screen, but as you can tell from this one, that's not the issue. If you think yours might be the issue, try removing the screen and cleaning it. So my question is, would you rather buy a working used piece of equipment for not a lot of money, or would you buy a new one instead? Now I would absolutely love to buy new stuff, but with the way things are right now, I would always consider buying used first. 
Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.